Here now, Andrew McCarthy, former federal prosecutor and National Review contributing editor, and Judith Miller, former New York Times reporter. She spent 85 days in jail protecting her rights as a member of the press. She is also a Fox News contributor. Judith, let me start with you on this. You know, what's your take? Because every reporter tries to find sources who will give them information about what's going on. At this point, we don't, it doesn't appear that that was classified information. So what do you think? Well, uh... Martha, my friends and uh, colleague, former colleagues at the New York Times say that this was just an outrageous invasion of uh, Ali Rutkin's privacy, mm -hmm. uh, that they seized her metadata, is, uh, uh, an, um, it basically erodes the understanding that was reached between the press and Eric Holder when he was attorney general. The Justice Department says that is not so, that they scrupulously followed those guidelines. They did not uh, invade her privacy or go after her metadata just for the heck of it, and that there were national security grounds for doing so. It's hard to know what the truth is in this case because we don't know what kind of national security information was compromised. Uh, I obviously, as a member of the press, feel strongly that since Attorney General Sessions has threatened us and threatened to put more reporters in jail to stop leaks, uh, one has to be suspicious. And we know that in my case, for example, the, no national security information was compromised. The FBI and the Justice Department were trying to make a political case, but we don't know enough yet, at least I don't, to draw a conclusion in this case. Yeah, um, Judith talks about the metadata material, which essentially meant that they were able to track if her phone number was discussing anything with his phone number, but not the actual content of what was going back and forth. So they know that they were contacting exactly. each other. Um, Andrew, what do you think? Well, you know, Martha, as Catherine said, these are interests that have to be balanced. The government has a very important interest here. Uh, the leaking of classified information has been outrageous, uh, going back to before the time that Trump was sworn into office. And at the same time, we have to have a free, robust press. And I think Judy's case, for example, is a cautionary tale of what happens when you have a case that isn't meritorious enough to use this kind of extreme measure that the government has. Um, on the other hand, having had over the years to, to apply these guidelines, you do have to make a balancing. And the fact of the matter is, in the jurisprudence of the First Amendment, the, the, the journalist is not given a privilege, at least much of one, above and beyond what the normal person has in terms of privacy. So I think you have to balance, is there a very serious case? Uh, is the journalist somehow implicated in it, either as somebody who witnessed it, who's somebody who's participated in it? Uh, and is it a situation where only the journalist has information that the prosecutor needs in order to make this serious case? If you can't check all those boxes, we shouldn't even be talking about this. Yeah, I mean, a lot of this obviously goes back to trying to right. figure out how this, how the information came out that led to the investigation and the Russia investigation. Um, and that was one of the things that the president wants to, to learn more about. Carter Page was one of the stories that she wrote about. And um, I know, Andrew, you believe that, that there's, you know, sort of an a anti-Trump bias in what you see coming from Mr. Wolf, who we should point out, Judy, is, has been working on the Senate Intel Committee for, for decades. And he had a lot of access to classified right. information as he brought in witnesses. I mean, he had a very high level clearance in all of this. Absolutely. But, uh, Martha, he's not being charged with leaking classified information. No. He's being charged with lying to the FBI. So it's very hard to know what the national security interests here that are uh, supposedly being jeopardized are. I think as a journalist, and we have to, we all have to be suspicious of the government's motives. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, it's also interesting to me that, as the government pointed out, uh, she was the only reporter who was, uh, who, whose records were seized. The other three reporters, that wasn't the case. And it may be, Andrew, as they dig into this, that perhaps there was an issue of classified information. We just, we just don't know that yet. I mean, you know, they, they basically were able to nail him down in terms of the interactions that he had with this reporter. Um, he claims that he never released any classified information. Well, I, I think also, Martha, it's possible that the case has been charged in a strategic way. By charging it as a three-count false statements case, 
there's at least a chance that the prosecutors won't have to make discovery in the case of what the classified information is. Now, you know, the skeptical among us will say that's because they're trying to keep under wraps that this isn't such a serious case. Uh, hopefully, we'd be able to say it's because there's really serious classified information, and if you can dispose of the case without exposing it, you should try to do that. Just 20 seconds left, but Andrew, you talk about the president's rights to, to privacy and information as well, you know, as measured against the, the, the press. Yeah, well, I think, you know, it's interesting that the, the press is up in arms over this, and, and perhaps rightly so, but the president is fighting this request to, to, to be interrogated, and I think there's an obligation on the special counsel's part to show he's got a serious case, too. All right, we've got to leave it there. Thank you very much. Great to see both of you tonight.